Hi, welcome back to our online tutorial series, Introduction to MRD Solve. In the video today, I want to get you start introducing you to the simulation workflow that we use in MRG Solve. And there's a couple different workflows that we can do. Um, and I want to use this sort of as an introduction to MRG Solve, just so you can see up front how it works and uh, how you put together these different types of simulations. And I think once you see MRG Solve in action, that'll give us um, other launching points to other topics um, that we'll see. So we're not going to necessarily give you all the details about how all this stuff works, but we just want you to show you basically how it works, and that hopefully will spur more questions or more digging as the tutorial series um, progresses. So in this first video here, I'm going to show you um, our most simple MRG Solve workflow. Um, this is workflow one, where we're just going to load a model, and we're just going to simulate some data um, from that model. So we'll just show you the basic simulation sequence. And then we're going to take this model, and this workflow one is really taking a model and adding an event object. So we just take, um, and the result of this is just going to be a single uh, simulated profile. Um, and that's sort of in contrast to the other two workflows that we're going to get into, where we take a model and we might simulate into a population. Um, that's workflow two. And then workflow three is a little bit more complicated, where we're adding a data set, where we can have a lot of different individuals or a lot of different things going on. Um, but we want to just introduce the workflow here with this, this this simple workflow one, which is just a model plus an event. So we're going to start off by just loading up a model. We're going to go into our internal model library. There's a, another video on that that you'll see on how to use this, and as well as a video on how to use mread. But I'm going to create a model object called mod. I'm going to call this mread function. I'm going to go after this two compartment model. And we're going to get this out of our internal model library. And before I forget, I'm going to go back and I'm going to load MRG Solve. And I'm also going to load um, the dplyr package here. Um, and then once I load that, I can go into this model library. You can see it's re reading this two, comp two compartment model. Um, and it's done. And we, now we've got this model object. And just to reinforce some of the th some of the things that we did in a previous video, um, just and just to orient you to this model, I'm going to type this model to the console, and this will give me an overview. Um, I can check the parameters. So we've got some clearances and some volumes, an absorption rate constant, and this will also tell me the values of these parameters. I can get the compartments and the initial, the starting, the initial conditions for the compartments, and that's just when the simulation starts. This is where everything's going to start. We've got compartments, extravascular, central, and peripheral. Um, and then we can finally we can dig a little bit deeper into this model with this. We ran the C command, so C, and then the model object, and that'll tell us the code that was used to generate this model object. And you can take a look into this to see what's going on a little bit. Again, model specification and things like that, that's going to be under a different video. But we've basically got this model object that we can simulate from. And to simulate from, so there's a function called MRG sim. And we take our model object. I'm going to pipe it into MRG sim. And this is how we simulate from a model object. Um, and you can see the output here. We've got simulated output. It's essentially like a data frame. So we've got columns, ID, time, the simulation time. And we've got all our compartments here um, uh, that we get by default. And then also we've got this calculated output, the CP, which was um, just the scaled amount in the central compartment. Um, this is OK, um, but it's not that easy to see what happened here. So I'm going to introduce another method here called plot. And this is a special plot method that knows how to deal with output that comes out of MRG Sim. And now we get um, that simulated output, but plotted automatically. And I do a lot of this for the demonstration purposes so you can see the code that we did. And then we can easily see what happened in the output. So we get all our compartments plotted out and then this output variable, this CP. Um, this wasn't that. Uh, too terrible, terribly uh, compelling simulation because nothing happened. So all our compartments started at zero and they stayed at zero. So what I want to do is here is like introduce this um, concept of an, an event object, and that's a way that we can 
pair with our model just an intervention that we want to happen. And there most frequently it's a dosing event. So I'm going to reorganize how I did this, uh, set this up a little bit to take my pipeline. Now I'm going to take, in the pipeline, I'm going to take my model object. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a call to EV. And EV is an event constructor. And this, I can say I want an amount equals 100. So that'll put a 100 unit dose. Let's just plot this out or just show this here. So this is this event object, and this just says at time zero, put 100 units into the first compartment. You might recognize this EV ID, so that's an event ID, and one just means a, a, a bolus dose. Um, since we don't have any rate here, if we had a rate, it would be an infusion. There's going to be more on event objects uh, coming in a later video. Um, but this is just essentially the workflow that we have, where we can take a model object, we combine it with events, we call MRG Sim to actually do the simulation, and then we plot. So there's kind of four different pieces going on here. And we can see that we can get our single dose into the extravascular compartment here at time zero. Um, one thing that I might want to do here is that um, you can kind of see that we're only getting an observation. If we go back to the model, we're only getting that we're simulating from time zero to 24 out, and we're just getting an observation every one hour. And I can make this uh, a smoother line it's by getting more observations per hour. And I can do that by saying delta equals something like 0 0.1. So that will give me 10 observations per hour. And you can see that the line is much smoother than it was with one observation per uh, hour. The other thing that I might want to do here is that we can see that by the end of the 24 hours, we still haven't kind of come back down to, to where we started. So I might want to run the simulation out to be a little bit uh, longer. And so I can just say end equals something like 120. And then I can get the simulation. I can get the single dose and then follow the observations, getting an observation every 0.1 hours out to 120 hours. So that's some way that you can um, customize the simulation a little bit. Um, the other thing that we, we might want to do is we want to get some additional doses into here. So these event objects, we can take a argument called II, which is the inner dose interval. And so we'll do once daily dosing by saying the inner dose interval is 20, every 24 hours. This also supports something called ADDL, which is our additional doses. So I can do a total of um, six doses here. Two, three, four, five. We just need to run this out a little bit longer to see all six doses. So this just does that first dose plus an additional five. And now we're running this out to 240 hours. Um, um, we're putting this dose right now into this extravascular compartment here. And you can see these 100 milligram doses going in there. If I wanted this to be an IV bolus dose, I can just say compartment equals two. And now we're bypassing the extravascular and we're just putting the doses right into the central compartment. And I can also make this in a infusion by saying rate equals 10. And this will give me an infusion over 10 hours. So that's some of the things you can do with these event objects. I'm going to scale this back to just do our, um, our oral bolus dosing. Some other things that you might want to uh, you might want to do here um, is that um, we've got um, by default so we get by default we get all the um, if we look into the simulation um, output object by default we get an ID column we get the time we get all the compartments and the drive variables um, a lot of times we're not interested in what's happening in the extravascular compartment or maybe we're not even interested in the amounts but we're only interested in concentrations or something else um, and I can request um, different uh, output. So I can say request CP. And now when I run this, now I only get the plasma concentration here um, in my output. And if I wanted to say get the EV and CP, I could just list both of those. And that's just a way to reduce the amount of data that gets passed back um, to you from the MRD SIM call. So we can at an event, we can request different uh, compartments. Um, we can also um, uh, manipulate the 
the, sim the simulation duration to make sure that we get observations at all the times that, that we um, that we want to get them. So one other thing I just wanted to point out with this um, this workflow is that so we're kind of doing this all in line because I'm I want to simulate and show you what the output is things like this but a lot of times you want to capture this so I can just do the same simulation workflow and I want to capture this into an output object and now I can do things like head out I can plot it. This down a little bit. Um, I can I can go into that output object with this dollar sign operator and I can get all the concentrations that were there. That's kind of a mess. I can just print it to the screen. Um, and the other thing that we frequently want to do is I can coerce this to just a plain old regular data frame. And now I've just got a data frame of simulated data, and you can do whatever you want with it. You can summarize it, you can pass it off to ggplot, and things like that. And so you're not kind of stuck with this um, this output object um, that has um, you can extract all the data that came from there, um, and you can get at that um, and do summarize it or plot it out um, as you wish. Um, okay, so that's that's our basically that's our basic simulation workflow where we take a model, we add an event object, we can at the runtime, we can customize uh, different uh, aspects of the simulation, especially including the, the event object. So the uh, interventions are always completely distinct from the model. And so we have to specify that at the, at the time of the simulation. Then we can also request outputs, and we can manipulate the, the simulation time grid to get it looking um, the way we want to do. So that's our workflow one. That's our most simple workflow. In the next video, we're going to look at workflow two, which is taking a, the same workflow, but we're going to um, add a population element uh, to it. And uh, we'll make you tune in for that next video to hear more about that. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the next video.